Hey guys, welcome to uh, the second episode in the World Partition, kind of like Data Layers series. Uh, today we're going to go over how to kind of integrate Data Layers into World Partition uh, setup and have them function outside of World Partition. So first, what I'm going to do here is we're going to need to create a data layer. Now, if you right click in this area, it'll say create new data layer. But if you do that, it's not going to work. It'll do this and it'll create an unknown data layer. And it won't function properly. What you're going to have to do first is you have to actually create the data layer. Unreal Engine doesn't do it automatically for some reason. I think it probably should, and they may fix that in the future, change it. Um, but data layers are a newer system, and they have been changed since the release. So kind of giving them a little bit of a pass on that. Uh, see, I should have already... I did already create one, but I'm just going to create one in the main content folder. If you go to miscellaneous data layer. If you click it, let's just call it uh, hidden object layer. Go ahead and save. And then I'm going to go to unknown. We're going to go here. And then you can pick the data layers that you've created. So I'll do hidden objects. And then you've got editor preferences here. Is initially visible, is initially loaded. These are just editor side. So this is just if you load up the editor, load up the map, whether or not you want these objects to just be there when it starts. I would recommend probably turning these off. You can turn them on right here um if you so desire but this will keep you from i don't know from the editor basically crashing as you load into it because there's just so much to load so i would recommend turning those off it's up to you though it depends on the size of the game um we can go ahead and open that up so we have the data layer type we're going to want to go ahead and change this there are two types so there's editor and there's runtime I would, if you're going to be using it for the actual game, then you're going to want runtime. Um, editor specific, I believe it's for that same thing. It's like if you want an asset to be, you want to be able to unload lots of assets or load them in all at once to save on performance um, while you're actually working on the game. You can set this to editor and you can have multiple actors be a part of multiple data layers so one actor can be a part of like three data layers um and one data layer can hold a ton of actors so how you handle that's up to you but for actual game runtime if you just want it to be an editor side data layer then you can switch it to editor i honestly don't know what support actor filters is i've tried to figure it out but from what i've seen i'm just i'm just not sure um, there's not a lot of information on it. There might be something in the documentation, but I haven't been able to find it yet. So I normally just leave that blinked out and then the debug color, which doesn't matter. Save. Okay. So then if you want to add objects to a data layer, go to outliner, I'm just going to do all these. Do this one and then up to maybe like 48, 45. There we go. Okay. And then once you've got them selected, you want to go back to data layers, right click, and third option down is add selected actors to the data layer. Do that. And then if you, this just toggles visibility. If you do this, it actually unloads them from the editor. Okay, so now 
to separate them from the loading in and out of the grid. I'm gonna reselect them. We're gonna go to streaming. So currently they are set up default to spatially loaded and none. So if we turn off spatially loaded, then the grid will not recognize them and it won't load or unload them and it will be determined entirely by the data layer. So we'll go ahead and save all. So now, oh, I left them invisible, whoops. Uh, and objects, initially loaded and visible. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, initial runtime state, let's do loaded and activated. Okay, there we go. Yeah, this is the initial option down here. If you see the under the data layer, uh, you've got editor visible loaded, and then you've got runtime. Now, most of the time in a game, depending on what the object is, you'll probably want this to be unloaded. It depends on the layer, very situational. Um, but I'm just going to leave them as activated for now. Okay, so now they're visible. That's a previous tutorial if you want to look into footstep sounds. We're going to go away until everything else disappears. Ooh, I hope we can make it far enough. Yeah, we'll be able to. Okay, so as you saw before, those were disappearing when we were like right over here. And now these and these are both visible. And go even farther and they just won't unload ever um you can see them right here they're all still just active go ahead and exit out okay so okay sorry about that got a call um, okay, so data layers. All right, so now we're going to go over how to stream these in and out. So now what we want is we're going to unload them at runtime. There we go. These are also going off of the uh, grid. That's why they didn't disappear. Um, but these, you can see, have unloaded themselves. Now, in order to get them to load in, we're going to need to create a blueprint. I'm also just going to put it right here. Do an actor. Uh, uh, I'll do, I'll just call it actor loading. Now, the collision box, we'll just make it kind of large. Typically what you're going to want to do is make it large enough so that it covers the whole area that the actors are in. Some people just recommend doors, like if you have a doorway into an area, that you put it at the entrance, any entrances to the doorways. So as they enter or leave, it activates or deactivates. I like to, depending on the way the area is designed, if it's like a tunnel, you can do that. Um, but if there's a lot of entrances and exits, I like to have it just cover the whole area that you want them to be loaded in, or just like outside that area. So for example, let's go ahead and just make this a lot bigger. Box, let's do like a thousand by a thousand by 200. Basically the whole area, it's a little smaller though. We'll do 1500. Okay. Save all. Let's see. Do, do like that. We'll do like that. Okay, yeah, player starts still outside. Okay, 
and then okay so now what we're gonna do is we need to i'm just gonna remove this we need to get the collision and basically when it interacts with the or when it collides with the player character um it needs to load in those areas so bottom we'll do component begin overlap and then we'll do end overlap so because i'm having it surround the whole area as long as they're still overlapping it the objects will stay loaded in and then when they leave the area then they will unload so we'll just do we'll do get player character that's not the prettiest setup there Branch true, and then data layer. Let's see, get data layer manager, and then data layer instance. Time ah, there we go. Data layer. You want to get the data layer subsystem. Okay, so you can get rid of that. And then the runtime. So set data layer runtime state. Set to true. So if it is the player, we want to set the data layer runtime state. So this is going to be the data layer right here. We're going to pull off. This is going to be dependent on the collision. So you could make this instance editable so that you could set the collision down and then change the data layer from the actual actor outside which i think i'm going to do and then here we'll do the hidden objects yeah we'll do hidden objects so hidden objects is the default but you can change it if you want it to work for a different layer uh in state we want it to be activated And then if they end overlap, we want to do the same thing. Except we want it to unload. Okay. Go ahead and test it out. So invisible, loaded in, unloaded, loaded, unloaded, loaded. Now, obviously, doing this in the real world in every situation wouldn't be wise. Um, so next, what I'm going to do is show a good use case for it. So let's go ahead and just take the. Uh, I can't click it. There it is. Go ahead and just move this back a little bit. I'm going to build a small house real quick. Give me just a second. Okay, so I decided not to add a roof, but go ahead and change this slightly. So we want these to load in before the person can see them. because We don't want them to load in as the player is looking at them. So we can go ahead and move this over here. This will cover all the visible area they have pretty much. I do that there we go and then i'll move the player outside that spawn zone 
So now this is just this area. No, it's actually covering some of that too. That's fine. For this example, this will work. Um, I'll go ahead and raise it up a bit. All right, and then we will I save. I don't know. I'll hit play. Okay, so if I go over here. See, they're loaded in. If I go back over here, eight, you can see they're gone. So it only loaded in those objects in this room. So now if you have any larger objects um, or something like this, where it's this room can't be seen from any direction except like right here, or if you're inside of it, or if you're above it, but if it has a roof, then that's not a problem. But um, if there's only like one way in, then, you know, you can cover the whole room. And as long as they're inside the room, these objects will be visible. The minute they leave, the objects disappear. It's separate from the grid system. So if like the player is like right here, they're really close to the room. Let's see. So like, let's say they're, you know, over here, they're really close to the room but they don't need to see these objects. So there's no reason for those objects to load in when they're like right here or even right here. So there, there are more optimizations you can make to that, but the point is, is you don't want them to load in all of these objects while they're right here. It doesn't make any sense. So the data layers can be used in conjunction with the grid system and collisions in order to make a more optimized system. All right, so I think you guys get the idea um, for how that is supposed to work. Just remember that under the items, hold down, under streaming, Is it streaming? Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, so under streaming, um, world partition is spatially loaded, makes them so they go off the grid. You can make them go off the grid and data layers at the same time, but it doesn't make as much sense they'll they'll end up like conflicting with each other sometimes so it's better in my opinion to use one or the other um okay in the next video i think what we're going to go over is uh setting up the collisions uh so that they load in and out on the grid partition system and keeping these on the data layer. So, I mean, having thousands of collisions on your map, uh, thousands of actors with collisions attached could slow the game down quite a bit. Um, so this will be the performant way in order to set up a system like this, have the collision load in when the player gets close, and then have the collision actually load in these objects. Um, I think that'll uh I think that'll be the next thing we do. Okay. Well, thank you guys for watching. Um I hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you in the next episode.